politics in Texas, there are two names that come to mind. Molly Ivins and this man's name. Um, yeah. He's had, I think it's eight New York Times bestselling uh, books, former agriculture commissioner of Texas. Um, and uh, we have his newsletters over on the table here, and also forums where you can subscribe to them. And it's not expensive, and it's wonderful material. So please, uh, if you're interested in progressive politics in Texas, uh, hit, hit the booth over there. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Jim Hightower, everybody. Thank you. here and uh, thanks for allowing a scrubby Texas uh, populace to come in here to scoot in to the scoot in and to join you indivisibles uh, in our looking for the Marcus uh, here tonight. Uh, and I mean, I, I have to say I, I thank all of you uh, out of state uh, paid uh, protesters uh, <laughs> for being bust, bust in here. Bust in here. This makes me happier than a flea at a dog show to be standing up here looking out at all of you free thinkers and truth seekers, you corporate greed whackers and right wing butt kickers, but mainly you agitators, agitators for America's progressive economic value. <laughs> Thank you for having the guts and the gumption to resist and rebel a new national government of goofy, daffy, sleepy, sleazy, Larry Curly, and Mo. <laughs> but thank you especially for being serious about restoring our democracy without being tedious about it. <laughs> having fun. I, I can tell you that battling from experience, battling the bastards is just about as much fun as you can have with your clothes on. <laughs> well, what you're doing uh, is not just what democracy looks like, it is what democracy is. Ordinary, workaday people yeah. coming together, taking names and taking charge. I, of course, am from here in Austin, but uh, I'm actually from South Austin. Yeah! Uh, we have a little different attitude over there. Molly and I live there, John Henry Falk, et cetera. And our, our unofficial slogan on the South Side is we're all here because we're not all there. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what is pulling indivisible together here in Austin, here in the 21st District, here in Texas, here throughout uh, this uh, country, because we know that the powers that be are not at all there in terms of grasping those fundamental egalitarian values of economic justice, uh, fairness, and economic opp and opportunity for all. Uh, by the powers that be, I'm talking about our governors and Congress creditors, our big oil frackers and Walmart wage whackers, our wall builders and hate monsters, the bosses, the bankers, the big shots, the bastards, and the bullshitters. We think that they're the top dogs, and we're just a bunch of fire yeah. <laughs> Now, economists have a technical term to describe what those powers that be are doing to us. It's called stealing. <laughs> Remember that song that Woody Guthrie had about the outlaws? Pretty boy Floyd, the outlaws? And a verse that said, As through this world I travel, I see lots of funny men. Some will rock you with a six gun, and some with a fountain pen. It's a fountain pen, so we're doing a serious stealing in our society today. And that's why the American people are revolting, in the very best sense of that term. I, I'm lucky, Doc, in that I get to travel a whole lot. Around the country, but then just about every place it's got a zip code, and in every one of those zip codes, there's somebody or some group of somebodies, or some coalition of groups of somebodies, who are battling the bastards. And more often than not, we're winning. 
at the grassroots level. We have enormous power, and, and that's where I think we've got to focus. This movement is start right here, wherever you are, whatever your zip code is, start there and build something, because we have real power at a local level that we do not yet have at a national level. Yeah. They say that the first job of a citizen is to keep your mouth open. We're pretty good at that. But it helps that that mouth is attached to a brain. And that's the importance of networks, like Indivisible, is that we have to have these connections, these relationships, so that one brain connects to another brain and adds that power together. I, I think of Indivisible uh, like a little hardware store over on the south side called Harold's Hardware. Anybody yeah. knows Harold's? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great place. Uh, not a big box store, relatively small, but it's a great place. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to buy the whole carton of nails. They'll sell you two nails. That's what you're after. They'll say, well, what are you trying to do? Well, I, I want to build a bench. Well, let's pencil it out, they say, and see what you need. They'll loan you a power tool. You can take a tool home and bring it back. And the slogan at Harold's Hardware is, together, we can do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be our slogan, doesn't it? Yeah. But we can't do it ourselves, but together, we can do anything, as we have in the past. This is not the first crisis we have faced of democracy in America. A little thing called the Civil War, you might remember that. A brutal time. This may be a brutal time, too. I don't know where it's going. but. The importance is that we are together and figuring out how to take this power, this democratic possibility uh, into the future. Not take America back, like the Tea Party says. They've taken us back 100 years already. <laughs> but to move America forward, all of America, together. So I'm happy to be here tonight, essentially to urge you to keep on keeping on. Only more so. I, I first uh, met Bernie Sanders 30-something years ago, went up to campaign for him in uh, Vermont. And after a rally we had at Mount Montpelier, the state capitol there, a guy came up wearing a political button. And it was the best one I've ever seen. It was a big button. And he said, wearing a button is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be a nation of button wearers. We gotta make those phone calls, make those contacts, talk to people in supermarket lines, talk to strangers on the street. We, we gotta ar argue with some of our own family members and our friends. But we gotta build, that's the thing, and target and focus on building a real political movement, a people's political movement. Uh, and, and so I, I, I got three notions to leave with you here. One is keep reaching out. We've got to add not to the volume of the crowd, the diversity of the crowd. You can't build a progressive society if you don't have a progressive movement. A diverse movement. And, uh, and it's easy to do. I work a lot with farmers, uh, red areas, uh, et cetera. And, uh, and uh, you know, Jesse Jackson said something smart uh, several years ago. He said, we might not all come over on the same boat, but we're in the same boat now. <laughs> That's a powerful political reality, and you can reach people with that message and bring them in uh, honestly, with integrity, into this movement, whether it's individual or indivisible. I'm, I'm very active uh, with the Bernie Sanders Our Revolution uh, group. <laughs> uh, the state of Texas, believe it or not, will be the first state affiliate of Our Revolution in the country. And then the second thing is to stay on the offensive. That's, uh, you know, chasing Lamar's cardboard uh, <laughs> cut out there. That is so good. It, it, is so, it is so intimidating to him. It is not that you don't get to see Lamar. He doesn't see you. And that's what's wrong. Because Congress is supposed to see you and therefore have some empathy, some, some feeling, some, some action that might benefit all of us, the whole society. That's the problem with Lamar. Of course, there's a great irony that he's uh, 
chair of the science committee. He doesn't believe in science. <laughs> you know, Jack Nicholson said that he never understood the word irony until his mother called him a son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> about that. <laughs> so, maybe we need to do a little bit of that with uh, Lamar. Uh, but don't expect him to read anything. There's a new uh, report out by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the authority on climate change in the world. And uh, Lamar was asked about it and said um, he hadn't read it. I only read summaries, he said. <laughs> and, uh, and do you think that's... Uh, a little bizarre. He has also suggested that Americans uh, should not waste their time subscribing to newspapers or uh, or watching uh, the news on television. Uh, instead, should get their uh, information from Donald Trump. <laughs> Better to get your news directly from the president, he says. In fact, it might be the only way to get the uh, the unvarnished. Oh! <laughs> I hear this guy say stuff like that, and I think, 100,000 sperm, and you were the fastest. Wow! You're good tonight. The third thing, the final thing, the main, most important thing, is to persevere, be strong, keep moving. Keep doing stuff. That's what breaks down the establishment walls. Keep at them. Uh, <coughs> perseverance is, is everything. Think about the, the suffrage movement of the 1842 Seneca Falls meeting uh, with Elizabeth Katie Stanton and others uh, there. You know, none of those women uh, ever got to vote. But they created a movement that created a vote for more than half population of the United States. That's the way we've got to look at it. It's a long-term little d democratic battle that, that we're in here. We're, we're fighting uh, against, uh, we're fighting the, the true politics of America, which is that too few people control too much of the money and power. And they're using that control to get more for themselves at our expense. That's real politics right there. And that's the fight you're in. It's big, it's important, uh, and it deserves your best, best effort. And your best effort involves the creativity that I see around here, and the humor, uh, and the fun uh, that you uh, represent. You know, Willie Nelson told me once, he said, uh, the, early, the early bird might get the worm, but it's the second mouse that gets the cheese. <laughs> We've got to stay in it. Stay in it for the long haul. I'll leave you with this. There's a, uh, our friend uh, John Drumgool, who got the natural gardener out to, on the southwest side of town here. Woo! You know, we're, we're always being told by the, by the centrists and by the corporatists uh, that, well, you, you can't do anything. You're just ordinary people. You don't matter. Uh, and that, you know, the corporations have all the money, they have all the power, they have the media, they have politicians, etc. But as Drumgoole told me, Drumgoole, having been a pioneer in the organic movement, told me those who say it can't be done should not interrupt those who are doing it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.